Welcome back, everyone. Last time we spoke about the cash flow quadrant with Robert Kiyosaki. I'll bring it up here in a second. And we talked first and foremost, kind of getting guided to or of the pros and cons of the different quadrants. And I think we tend to put these in a hierarchy because we're just in a hustle and grind culture. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the S quadrant. Please go back to the previous show and check out our, our conversation about pros and cons and our own experiences with the E quadrant. Did you learn anything about me you didn't know <laughs> from the E quadrant? Yeah, you, I learned you, that you worked in a grocery, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, you've talked about Starbucks, but I didn't realize that you you worked there long enough to get you know about 30 going on your, on your 401k or whatever the matching program yeah. was there. So that's that's a significant amount of time at Starbucks, which is super cool. I didn't know that you used that to then springboard to the DR with your wife. I think that's really yeah. cool. So that's yeah. what I learned. But yeah. go back, everyone. The link is below to the main episode where we talk about the cash flow quadrant and then yeah. to the employee episode. On this episode, we're going to start with self-employed. So Grant, yeah. you mm -hmm. are... And this is where the self-employed and the business one gets kind of funky. So do you want to talk about how you describe yourself? Yeah, so quickly, how the S quadrant relates to where I'm at today. And my financial freedom journey is also like a meaning journey. So I, I'm not dogmatic about, like you're saying, it's pretty fluid. Some days I'm a pure business owner and I have employees. And if you read this chart, please do. Employees are producing the money that I benefit from. But in self-employment, you're still trading. You're still wearing a lot of hats. You're in the business and you might be, you might juggle Hey, today I'm a business owner. Tomorrow I'm self-employed. For example, we're going through something right now where I'm in the weeds. Now, fortunately, I know how to be a good employee. I know how to punch a clock for myself. Fortunately, I know how to grind and I know the craft that we're doing very well. So I do spend, I want to, I want to, I'll range you. I spend between 40 to 60% of my time still in the self-employment quadrant. And it gets kind of weird. Because we might talk about real estate once we get to the I quadrant, but there's a lot of days that the I quadrant and real estate, it's actually not necessarily the I quadrant. There's these fluid boundaries in the SBI quadrant, depending on how things are going and how hands-on or hands-off you are. So that's, that's the S quadrant for me, but I spend, I, I am, I consider myself at this point generally unemployable because of paradigms, not because of skill, but that's how S quadrant relates to me. How does S quadrant? relate to what your your journey right now yeah and i was very open about this in the e-quadrant conversation but i'm an employee first and foremost and yeah. on my nights and weekends i am self-employed i do have a company where i support people to build websites and build other digital products i'm currently building right now kind of like a member specific area for a company as they start to build out digital products and they basically just mm -hmm. want to have that you know, behind a paywall. And it's really yeah. exciting because it's going to allow them to be able to have, and once again, we use this word very, very loosely here, but passive income. Yeah. What it's going to allow them to do <laughs> is to build once, sell twice. Once they have the digital product, they're going to be able to have it up on the on their on their website and then be able to push people towards it. So I'm currently building that right now for a company. So, but I like that you broke it down somewhere between 40 to 60% of your time. And for mm -hmm. me right now, self-employment is probably five to 10% of my mm -hmm. working time. But sure. like I have my full 40 hour job. And then on the outside of that, on the nights, the weekends, and I've even been getting up in the morning early yeah. just because if it's a really incredible, if you put in 30 minutes of work into something in the morning and 30 minutes at night, it breaks it up. And yeah. at the end of the week, you've done five hours. You do an hour or two on Saturday, an hour or two on Sunday. You can really start to get some, some, some stuff done, especially yeah. when it comes to building certain things. If you're really confident with it, you know, you can really cut your time down and find a flow. But mm -hmm. I want to also call out to everyone watching that I am open about being in the E, S, and the I quadrant. And Correct. Grant is in the S, B, and I quadrant. So Grant Correct. is not an employee and I'm not a business owner. And I thought it was really interesting how you talked about how, depending upon the context and the circumstance, yeah. you yeah. can be in. Like if you just look at your real estate portfolio, some days you're an investor, yeah. other days you're a business owner. And then on some days you can be self-employed yeah. on some <laughs> level. And yeah. so why don't we look at the self-employed and talk about the best way to leverage being self-employed? Because I do think this is where we get into taxes. Taxes, you can figure that out. It's, it's, harder, it's harder to leverage taxes, especially in the yeah. US if you're just an employee. But once yeah. you step into the S, B, or I, then you get into a conversation where you can probably increase the amount of money you're going to take home by leveraging the tax system. Yeah. 
Well, okay. So real quick on, on, on the S quadrant, and I want to make sure I give you the meat first. Though employees, if you look at this chart, though employees, you trade time for dollars. What's different about self-employment? It is also time for dollars. The major difference is you are incentivized as a, as a self-employed to learn more efficient ways to do it. You are trading time for dollars, but when someone pays you, they very rarely pay you because you, you show them a time clock and said, I spent 15 hours on this. You generally spend time on it, make a quote and say, here's a deliverable. And though you still are doing the work, you are employed, but you are self-employed. You have now incentivizations to go, what shortcuts do I need? The best example is when ChatGPT came out, we found a way to use ChatGPT to create a hundred and quotes and then import those quotes into a Canva bulk and it creates info graphics for people's content strategy. Well, we stumbled into ChatGPT or it was invented and then we toyed with it and learned it. Well, we're still charging the same $150 for that packet of quote graphics for our clients, but it's taking us 15 minutes now instead of 50 minutes. And so you're getting paid the same, but your time is condensed. So the difference, the major difference between self that, that you really need to hear about for your financial freedom starts with that. But then you look at other dials, like you're talking about with taxes and the best simplest way I can say this is this, as an employee, you lend your taxes to the government and make the argument for why they should give it back to you at the end of the year. As a self-employed, you keep the taxes and and for the sake of time, maybe we'll do another episode on deductions because the riches of how to really create a spread over a 15, 20 year period is in taxes. But the difference between a self-employed and employed is with a self-employed, you keep that tax money and then the IRS has to make a case on what you need to give them and you make a case on what you get to keep. The idea being there are major benefits for you to have that money, look at that money, see what taxes you might pay, and then either reinvest that or put it to your own benefit. So you become in control of, depending on what state you're in in the union, if you're in the US, I don't know where you're at, but in the US, depending on what state you're in, you could easily be sitting on an additional 28 to 31% that you've been holding on to. But what about you? What, what pros and cons have you experienced with self-employment? Yeah, I think the taxes is definitely one. I'm able to write stuff off and I'm able a to take lower my, my tax exposure at the end of the year, which is a really, really great thing. I'm able to write things off that I would normally do anyways. And I could just say, well, I needed to do those in the duty of getting this product or service out essentially to a client, which is really, really cool. So, but I do want to leave that. So we will have a whole sure. other episode where we do talk about how to, you know, take advantage of the of taxes. And then the other thing that I think you're, you hit on is the reason why I love it so much. As an employee, I'm supposed to work 40 hours a week, right? Yeah. Now, if I give the organization 100 hours of output, I still mm -hmm. only get paid 40 hours. Yes. But when I give an a client 100 hours, I'm going to get paid for those 100 hours. And this is also where we're going to have a different episode so we don't get into this, but this is where you get into value-based pricing. And as a yes. self-employed person, I can sell and I'm just going to pick something up. So here we go. Here's a cable. <laughs> That is actually super useful. It's a USB to USB-C. And I use it all the time because I have an Apple. Now, this to, if you buy in the store is $10, maybe 10, 12 bucks. But if I find myself in a coffee shop with someone who absolutely needs this to connect That's their right. computer because they're going on with their CEO. And if they don't do this presentation, they're going to be fired. Yeah. I could sell this to this person for $100, right? And so once you get into being a self-employed person, you start to see that different solutions fixed for different people have different prices. And so you can really start to leverage your time. So let's look at this again. And this is just a super simple kind of stupid example. This is the product I have. This maybe takes me if I'm an employee. Well, I, I don't want to compare it to being an employee, but if I want to sell this for $10, yeah. I can get to a point where I can produce this, like you said with the chat GPT example, for a dollar yes. because I'm going to sell at scale. It no. allows you, you get into economies of scale and we will get no. into economies of scale in another episode, but economies sure. of scale is a fun, it, for me is a fancy way of just saying you can build almost exponentially. Yeah. Uh, as an employee, when you trade and you look at the quadrant, your time for money, yeah. you are going to be limited on some level. 
even yeah. the even the highest if you work in if you work as a surgeon or a heart surgeon you can max make a million dollars in the u.s that's how that yeah. works yeah if you are self-employed though you can your your time is becomes leveraged and that is a different thing when you're sitting yeah. at your job and you have to be there for eight hours but you've already done your work and you have six more hours well if you're self-employed you get those six hours back right because what you actually needed to get done you could get done in two hours so i could probably go on a, a larger diatribe here and i think we will have a different episode about value cost and price sure but when you're self-employed, then you get into the game of actually buying time back, yeah. which is an exciting thing. And, and you, you reach a really interesting, or you bring up a really interesting point, and that is this, an employee trades time for dollars and the employer tells them where to be and when. As a self-employed, you are trading time for dollars, but depending on how efficient you are, you can get that dollar per hour much more leverage, like you're saying, but the other advantage is you can move that around, meaning you have the freedom to say, well, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and just start working. And I think Alex Hormozzi is big on this. He starts working at 5 a.m. He's uninter uninterrupted. He does the work he needs to do. And then by 1 or 2 p.m. he's done. He goes to the gym or whatever he wants to do. You can decide when you execute those hours. So in the ESBI quadrant, for me, I have a financial freedom framework. And it starts with time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom. And time freedom, I used to have it the other way around, where it was location freedom first, then time freedom, and then financial freedom. But I've kind of modified that a little bit because pragmatically for people, they're not going to just wake up one day and become a business owner. If you make the leap from the E to B quadrant, which we'll talk about for another episode, there's some nuances there where you can't just be where you want when you want. It doesn't really work that way. It actually makes more sense to follow this journey of the employee to the self-employed because then you can say, well, I know what work I need to do, but let me juggle it around on my calendar so I can spend more time with my kids. A little that that's a type of wealth. Or I spend more time with my spouse, or 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 maybe I'll work later in the evening and work out in the morning. You not only can leverage or can or get more efficient and get rewarded for that efficiency, you can also start maximizing your calendar. One gets you more cash in your pocket for less time. The other gets you a greater sense of control, which is the number one thing I'm looking for in my life is do I control my time? The only currency the wealthy really are, ha is limited to the wealthy too. So I don't know if that helps at all, but that, that, I think that's a third point that we really have to call out. You control the clock, generally speaking. Yeah, so we've done self-employed. Let's go ahead and we will see everyone in the next episode, which is gonna be the B quadrant for the business owners, which is where you start to step into a different realm. The E and the S, as you see on the quadrant, you're still doing time for money. But when you get into the B and the I, then you start to leverage things that aren't time to get money. And this is where you do kind of see a more exponential growth if we're just looking at ROI or return on investment. So why don't we see everyone in the next one? And if you're interested in the cash flow quadrant, our main video or the employee video, go ahead and check the links below and we will see you in the next video. Thanks. See ya.